Um, you were measured against a guy who was in his fifth season in Formula One, in Adrian Sutil, uh, and you, you matched him pound for pound in qualifying. He scored a fraction more points than you at the end. Uh, you must be pleased with how uh, you measured up against him. Yeah, Adrian, Adrian's a good guy. Um, I've known Adrian for a lot of years, and he's regarded as being a fast guy in Formula One. Um, it's unfortunate he's not going to be my teammate this year because we worked very well together last year and pushed the team on, but um, the board and obviously the team have decided to put Nico in the car. Um, Nico equally had a great run with Williams back in 2010, and it's going to be a young, young challenging um, team, um, and, and that's what Force India is, and they, they believe that's, that's the way to go forward. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I only want to secure my drive. I don't want to think about the other people. I've got enough to worry about, and quite honestly, it doesn't matter who my teammate is because I want to beat them, but equally we need to respect each other to drive that team to another level. And uh, for 2012, you've got uh, Nico Hülkenberg, as you say. He's a guy similar to you. He's a Formula 3 champion. He's done a season of Formula 1. He was with Williams uh, in 2010. How do you think you're going to get on? It will be equal territory. Um, you know, Nico, Nico's... Um, was a little bit behind me in terms of Formula 3. He was a Formula 3 Euro Series champion two years after me. Um, he's, a, he's a strong character, um, but I've never been scared of any of my teammates. I'm up for the challenge. I, I believe that's what lifts you. you you're anxious, you, you know, your, your emotions play, and it's certainly, you know, your adrenaline should pump and get you under pressure. Um, and if you can deal with the pressure, that, that's when you're, you're in good fighting spirit. I think you, uh, you more than repaid the faith that VJ uh, showed in you by putting you in the team. Third row in qualifying for your home race at Silverstone. That must have been a highlight. It was a, a massive day. Um, the whole week, the weather conditions were quite tricky. We arrived at a new generation of Silverstone, which everybody was very impressed. The new pitch structure, um, the track had changed. So the start of the lap was you know, near the end of the lap before. Um, and it was really to see how it was going to work. But... I must say, when you come to the, the British Grand Prix, there's 130,000 people. Um, the atmosphere was electric. Um, even to the point it's 6 o'clock at the rock concert afterwards, I couldn't believe the amount of people that were still there in support. Um, I qualified sixth. It was the best result of the year. Um, had that been a sixth place anywhere, I would have been ecstatic. But to do it there on probably one of the more difficult tracks where you have to have commitment on the lap because it's the lowest braking energy track. Um, so it's all about momentum, high speed. And equally, our car didn't always have the downforce that the other guys had at the front. Um, unfortunately, we didn't carry on in the race up until the midpoint, wh whatever lap it was. Um, I don't want to know. Um, but there was a, a bad decision. Um, but, you know, equally, that was what we were trying to achieve, the best possible. Um, but through that mistake, um, I believe we learned, we changed structures, changed our approach, and that benefited us later on in the year through key decisions on how we would approach a race. And your best race performance came in Singapore with uh, sixth place on a tricky street circuit, very uh, changeable temperatures uh, and changeable light. So again, something you must be pleased about. It was. Um, we took that, um, you know, we, we had a good qualifying. We had a difficult Friday in Singapore. We lost the whole of a practice session uh, through a brake line field, um, which in Singapore, it's all about building yourself up very slowly to make sure, you know, you, you keep the car on the track and you nail it in qualifying. Uh, we, we didn't manage to get the qualifying set up right, so we, we, took a, we took an approach that we would try and do the best job possible, but go for a race a race balance um, that should help us. And we started a little bit different. The tire compounds were similar, but we chose to go with the one that was slower at the start um, to try and stretch the first stint. We did that. Um, we came out from our first stint on a set of super softs, and we were going very strong. Um, and I saw the safety car boards about eight laps in when we were going forward, and I thought, oh, here we go. You know, this is blowing the whole thing. But um, fortunately enough, the guys made a good decision to stop me. And uh, we actually raced Mercedes and outperformed them, uh, which, which is a big thing. And at one point, we were actually racing Ferraris in the race. As a driver, do you enjoy the, the three segments of qualifying, the cut and thrust sort of bite-sized chunks of time where you've got to get a lap time out of the car? Yeah, um, it's all about getting a banker in, um, certainly in Q1. But the, the only bit I think is a bit unfair is we tend to, because there, there's such a big difference in the tyre compounds, which I believe should be, um, the quicker cars, probably the first six cars can get through Q1 on a harder set of tyres where we have to run a set of softs, uh, which then allows us to use a set in Q2 of only one new set of softs 
and it means you want to save a new set for the race. So you, you effectively don't go out in Q3 if you make it. But that is the best possible position for us to be in a race. And that's what allows us to challenge the likes of Mercedes because they are close to beating Ferrari, whereas we can't beat them in qualifying, but we can race them in the race because we're in a better stint. And people criticize you for it, but at the same time, nobody wants to watch who's going to qualify eighth. They've always got the cameras on the first three or four cars. So what difference does it make? And if you actually look at it, Force India or the cars in the midfield will do more laps in qualifying than the front cars because they do less laps at the beginning. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one, isn't it? But the, you know, the guys who've paid to come and see you want to see you going fast. It's, uh, it's a dif difficult one, isn't it? It's a hard one to get the rules, and it's something we try and discuss because of the, you know, to, to give everybody a good viewing. But as a team, that is the best way we can perform and the best way we can make the race more entertaining for you, to mix it up that little bit. And also, if you get into Q3, just to give us that decision to change the tyre strategy to the first six or seven cars, which are locked into a set compound, we might try something different um, just to throw something up if there's an odd safety car that might work.